All right, so the last couple of videos I've put out have all been about setting up N8N and getting everything ready. And I figured a lot of you just want me to get to the juicy meat of the thing and actually show you guys some automations. So today I'm gonna to start with a one that I consider pretty essential, even though it's not the kind of thing that you would intuitively think about, but this is something that I think every author should use. I call it the summary plus document. And this is the kind of thing that I use in multiple automations. So this is an automation that I run on my book prior to running a lot of others. So think of it as just like a pre-step to a lot of other automations, one that can be plugged into many different functionalities uh, in, in different automations. So enough of me yapping, let's actually take a look at what it looks like. So this is the automation in a nutshell here in N8N that I've built out. And what this does is it creates what I call a summary plus document. So this is not a summary document. That would be too simplistic. This is a summary plus document. But there is a really big reason why, well, a couple of reasons why I use this in other automations. But firstly, let me kind of explain to you what happens. What we do, if we look over here on the left here, it starts with just a simple click. So I just hit this big button that says execute workflow. And then it goes into this step, which is to get a summary plus document. And what this is, is a it's it starts out as a blank sheet that I put together in Google Docs. So let me just show you what this looks like. So I have this, this uh, book here. It's called Spoils of Anwen. It's the first in my Rise of King Arthur trilogy. And by the time you see this, it'll actually probably have been published. But this is uh, this is kind of an epic fantasy Arthurian thing with a young King Arthur who hasn't yet become king, uh, painted as a reluctant hero. And so I have the book here. I've recently finished going through it and proofreading it and everything. And now it is ready for publication, but I want to be able to create a summary plus document of it so that I can use that in some of the other things that I'm going to be developing. And I'll. I'll get to like why this is important in a second. But then I've also created this document here called Spoils of Amwin Summary Plus. And this is just a blank document for now. All I have to do is go ahead and take this ID number right here in the URL, uh, which you can find just between the last two forward slashes here. It's this little string of numbers. That's the ID number. You take that. I go to my automation, go to this little node right here, where it's getting the summary plus doc and make sure that doc ID is copy and pasted into this uh, little space. Okay. So what this does is it retrieves that document for use for later. And then I have it download a file and this file is the full book that I want to summarize. So I likewise have to go and grab the ID from this document and then just double click on this download file node and make sure it's included here in this ID section of the node. And what this does, I've set this up so it is downloading the HTML of this document right here. And what that does is allows us to look at the formatting of that document. You'll notice, for example, that we have chapter one here. This is an H1 heading, as you can tell by up here where it says heading one. Uh, if I change this to say heading two, it would now be an H2 heading, but I want this as an H1 heading. Primarily for later when I'm formatting the book, it's easier to upload a doc into Atticus or Vellum or one of those if your chapters are listed as H1 headers. So that's why I keep them at H1s. But when you're pulling in a document into N8N, typically, it only looks at the plain text. It does not bring in formatting like the, the H1 headers. So it'll just say chapter one, but it won't know that chapter one is a header. And so I'm downloading this as HTML so that it can tell where the headers begin, right? Uh, and that also allows it to also view like what is italicized, what is bolded and, and stuff like that. And whoops, I had the wrong one, but uh, all right. So we download the file uh, with this node, and then it goes into this little code node that I've set up that returns HTML content. So just make sure that it takes this downloaded file and presents the HTML content uh, for analysis, essentially. And then this one's really important because this node is a piece of code that I developed uh, that I, I essentially vibe coded this. 
Uh, I am not a coder by any means, but I do sometimes put in little snippets of code here with the help of AI to assist in this process. So this, if you guys can hear, that's my that's my little girl. She is squealing right now. It's her bedtime. Um, but this is a node where we split everything up by headers. So remember how I said I want it to know where these H1 headers are. That's because here it's going to split up the document based on those headers. So it's going to look through the document and say, okay, everything between where it says chapter one here and the next H2 or H1 header, which is says chapter two, it's going to look at all the content in between that and it's going to split that up into its own section. And then from there, it runs a loop on every single one and it goes one by one through each chapter. So that's why it's important to split by headers is because it runs this prompt on each chapter. And as it goes through this prompt, it runs a single prompt on each one. Then it takes the results of that prompt and dumps it into the currently blank summary plus document. And then it repeats that process, dumps the next one into the summary plus document, dumps chapter three, then chapter four, then chapter five, etc. So let's talk a little bit about why we're doing this. Why would you want a simple summary prompt run on every chapter of your book and then just put into a new document like this? Well, the fact of the matter is, this might not be necessary for forever, but as of right now, if you were to put your whole book into a prompt, like let's say you wanted to develop some marketing materials, you wanted to develop a book description, a, a list of quotes, um, you, know, you know, headlines and stuff like that. It, let's say you wanted to do that. If you put your entire book into that prompt to say, hey, here's the book, make me marketing materials out of it, it's not gonna do a good job. In fact, it, would often, it will often do a very poor job because what happens when you have an enormous prompt like that where 99% of your prompt is just the entire contents of your book, what you're doing is you're essentially watering down your prompt. Additionally, even though a lot of these more modern models like Gemini 3 and the Claude 4.5s, even though they are technically capable of reading an entire book, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually able to understand the whole thing. In fact, the larger you give it, the more it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's not really able to sort of comprehend the entire thing at once, if that makes sense. Not in the same way that it can do with a smaller chunk. So what we do is we run it through this summary plus, plus prompt. And what this does is it can, A, it condenses the chapter, uh, the actual words of the chapter to a summary. And B, it kind of highlights key moments in that chapter that we might want an LLM to know if it's creating marketing materials or creating a story Bible or whatever we want to do with it after this. So with that in mind, let's look at the actual prompt that I'm using for this summary plus document. Now this runs again on each individual chapter and I will pause right here in case some of you want to screenshot this and, uh, and transcribe it. I'm not going to be including this below, but you can, if you join my story hacker gold program, you can get the JSON files for this entire automation. So you can make it your, your own, but essentially what we have here is it says, here's the chapter or scene you will analyze. And then inside of some XML tags, I bring in the full chapter that it's going to summarize. And then once again, it's much easier to, to handle a single chapter than an entire book all at once. It's also cheaper. Given the above section text, please follow these steps. Make sure to answer all the questions for each step. First, a summary. Create a five to six sentence summary of the events of the chapter or scene. Use character names instead of pronouns. Summarize the directive events of the scene only. Do not provide commentary of the scene. If there are multiple scenes within this chapter, split your summary into sections to identify the different scenes and what happens in them. New scenes are usually defined by change in location, time, or perspective. And if there are many scenes in a chapter, you can write more than the above prescribed five to six second sentences. Because sometimes you have chapters with multiple scenes in them. Personally, I like to, to write approximately one scene per chapter because I feel like that keeps the reader reading because the chapters are a little bit shorter. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, number two, characters. List every character who appears in the scene and only those that are actually in the scene. Describe what their actions they take, uh, what happens to them, any physical descriptors mentioned in the scene. That's for later if we're creating, say, a story bible and we want a physical description of the character, it can then scan through all of the different chapters where that character exists and if there are any physical descriptors mentioned in that chapter, it can collect all of those 
to create its thing as well as indications of their demographics if a chapter mentions their age for example for each character list what is their deepest heart's desire aka the thing they want most in the scene then we have setting write out key settings of the scene for each setting tell us how if that particular setting contributes to the story in a meaningful way how does it enhance or serve the plot how does it enhance or serve the character development this should be no more than three to four sentences conflict identify the main source of conflict or tension in the scene this should be one to two sentences tropes are there any tropes that are clearly evident in this scene? Limit it to three. Key quotes. What are the top three quotes or passages in this chapter or scene, or quotes that would make great marketing material? List them out verbatim. Note, do not include any preamble or post-summary uh, post commentary of the scene. Just provide the headings and the summaries as outlined. Format your output in Markdown as follows. And then I just give it some detail about how it formats each of those things. I make sure to do it in Markdown because Markdown is a, a language that AI is uh, ca very capable of reading. It's also relatively easy for a human to read as well. So I have it do it in Markdown. And that's it. So what it's doing is, is not just creating a summary of what happens in the chapter, but also listing out every character in every scene, uh, all of the setting elements, all of the conflict, the tropes. And what this does when you create the entire document, you've now, first of all, the document is significantly shorter than the whole book, which means that the AI can understand it a little better, but it's also condensed. It, think of it like uh, uh, juice from concentrate, right? You get, you get it in just a little bit of concentrate and now the AI is able to understand that better than if you had given it the entire book. So let's actually run this and see what it looks like. Now I've already hooked up the summary plus document and the downloaded file here. So all we have to do at this point is just say execute workflow and let it run through each of the steps, all right? So it's now on to the first chapter one and it's using GPT five mini for this, by the way, but honestly, any of the smaller models will do this job pretty well. Summary is an easy task for AI. That's why I give it a inexpensive model. Otherwise my bill for this would get pretty high. But since I use a small model like GPT five mini, you could also use Gemini 2.5 flash or Claude 3.5 high or 4.5 high Q. Any of those will work for just, just fine. I'm just happened to be using GPT five mini for this. Give it a second and it'll be done with the first chapter. All right, so now you can see by this tiny little two right here in the loop node here, that it's now onto the next uh, chapter. So if we go and look at our summary plus document, you'll notice it is no longer blank. And we already have this thing and it's formatted in Markdown as you can tell by the, the double pound sign here in front of chapter one. And, uh, and then we have summary. So here's the summary of the scene. And then here's inf information about each of the characters in that scene. Um, only the ones that actually appear in the scene. I don't. I noticed that it was giving me a lot more characters when it would uh, just when the scene would mention a character. And I really don't want that, so we just kept it to the characters that are in the scene. We have the setting, different things about the setting, the conflict, the tropes, which it got spot on here. The reluctant king. Uh, the bard who won't shut up and the missing relative slash inciting uh, family disappearance uh, quotes like, you know, I was a grain of corn once or whoso pulleth out this sword from this stone is duly born king of Britain. Keep talking and I'll stick you into the stone. That's a good one right there. And it's already finished chapter two. So we can scroll down and see it's working on that. Uh, as it works on chapter three, you will see that pop up right here any second now. And boom, there it is. Chapter four, actually. It had already done chapter three. So there you can see it, uh, it'll just continue to do this for the entire book. And granted, there's still quite a lot of words here. And I found that this process will still take up maybe 25, like the, the summary plus document will be maybe 25% in terms of word count of the original book, roughly. It depends on how many chapters you have. Uh, but uh, that's still way better for an AI to understand. And it'll cost you a lot less if you are using this summary plus document to plug into other documents. So let's talk about why I do this and what are some of the applications that I could use for it later. The main benefit is that I can now use this to create all kinds of new ideas and stuff from, uh, from this document. The two main applications that I use this for the most are for creating marketing materials. So taking this and plugging it into a marketing 
uh, automation that will create my book description, uh, my ad headlines, maybe some some YouTube content. You know, the possibilities are endless there. And especially when I give it things like the tropes and the quotes, it can use those to actually help it in uh, creating the, those marketing materials. The other major application for this particular document is plugging it into a uh, story Bible automation. So taking an uh, taking this document and using it to create kind of like wiki articles about each of the characters, each of the settings, your your magic system, etc. But really, this is a document that I just recommend keeping around just for the purposes of like, wh what if you want to plug it into a notebook LM a hub where you can be like, what color is this person's eyes again? You know, and you can look that up. Or if you just want to refresh yourself on the plot or something like that, you can do so by plugging this into any AI project and using it to help brainstorm your next series or whatever it is that you need it to do. I just find it's really helpful to have not just a summary of what happened in your past book, but a really detailed outline of not just the plot, but the characters and the world building and the conflict and all of that. So there are multiple applications that you could use this for. And that's the reason why a lot, a lot of people aren't talking about this because it's not a product by itself. It's just something I use to uh, create other things. So that is the summary plus document in a nutshell. Hope this was useful for you and we'll have way more of, of these automations to share with you in the near future. Again, if you wanna get your hands on this exact automation and not just try to figure it out for yourself, you can do so at the Story Hacker Gold membership. The reason I keep that behind a paywall is that it is kind of a complex topic and often requires a little bit of help and coaching. So we keep that there so we can, you know, work with you a little bit more directly. Hope this has been useful for you and I'll see you in the next video.